Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about your timeline settings and how they relate to your clip attributes to make your footage look correct and how they can actually affect your final project. Make sure you drop a like on this video so it gets boosted in the algorithm so that more people who need this information can find it. And without any further ado, let's jump into learning about the relationship between your timeline settings and your clip attributes inside of DaVinci Resolve. Here we are on the media page inside of Resolve. I'm gonna bring in this clip of some leaves that I have and I'm gonna get this message. Change project frame rate. The selected clips have different frame rate to the project. Would you like to change your timeline frame rate to match? You cannot undo this action. So this is where we lock in. So we can either match our project to our clip or we can match our clip to our project later. So right now I'm gonna click on don't change so that I can show you what happens. So we have a clip now in our media pool and we're gonna navigate on over into our edit page. Now that we're on the edit page, we're gonna drag this into our timeline. So now for clip attributes, what we're gonna do is find our clip. So this clip up here in our media pool. I'm gonna right click it and then I'm gonna come down to clip attributes. And when you click on that, this clip attributes window will open. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the video aspect and very specifically inside of clip attributes, we're gonna be focusing on our video frame rate. So that's where we're gonna find that. And then also today, we're gonna to go to file, project settings, or just hit shift nine to get here. And we're gonna go through our timeline format right here. So we'll have resolution, pixel aspect ratio, timeline frame rate, which we just decided. This is what throws the warning message when you first bring a clip into a project. So the default inside of Resolve is 24 frames per second. But if you shot your clips in 60 or something like that, and you want to play back in real time, you're gonna go ahead and hit change when that message pops up. And then this right here, this grayed out number will be 60 instead of 24. Now you can still adjust the playback frame rate in here. So we'll say for our 30 frame per second clip that we saw when we opened our clip attributes, we'll go for a 60 frames per second playback frame rate. And if we hit save on this and then watch this clip, you're gonna see that it comes at twice the speed as it would if we were watching a 30 in a 30. That's because you have half as many frames that need to fill up the same amount of time, but you have to use twice as many frames. So you're gonna show that at two times the speed and the exact opposite would happen if we came into our project settings and we turn this to 15. Now we're gonna see that at half speed because you're only able to show 15 frames per every second, even though the clip contains 30 frames worth of data per second. So another thing that you're gonna to need to know about your project settings and how to get your timeline to look how you want it to look and behave how you want it to behave is going to be your timeline resolution here. So we'll drop down this menu and you'll see that we have all of these options. If you're working inside of the free version, I'm pretty sure you can go up to 4K with your renders, but you might be capped out at 1920, just regular HD. But whichever, you want to go ahead and choose for your timeline resolution what you want to be exporting in. So whatever you want your finished project to be is what you want to go ahead and select here. Now, it's not magic. You can't decide that you want it to be 4K. If you shot it in 720p, it'll just stretch those pixels out and it will look bad. It will look gritty. But you can shrink things down if you need to or something else that you can do in here is come up to custom and this allows you to input whatever you want into these boxes. So if we flip these two values and turn our 1920 into a 1080 and our 1080 into a 1920 and then hit save, actually I'll flip this back to 24 real quick, and then hit save. Now we have a vertical timeline, a vertical playback window and when we go to deliver, we're gonna get it in that vertical aspect ratio. So that's a great way to make shorts content or anything that you need to make vertical. So if you come into clip attributes and we see that we have our 29.97 video frame rate, if we wanna reduce that number down to anything lower than 29.97, we're good to go. But if we wanna bring that number up, we just absolutely cannot do it. You're gonna turn red. And the reason that is, is because DaVinci cannot make frames that don't exist to populate that space. So if you shoot in 120, you can go ahead and use clip attributes to bring that down to, to something like 24 if you wanted to, but you can't bring it up 
past what you shot in. One last thing inside of our project settings here, we have our pixel aspect ratio. So a pixel is basically what a digital image is made up of. It's a tiny little dot. And when you have enough of them put together, you have a digital image. So our pixel aspect ratio is normally going to stay on square, but if we change it to CinemaScope, it's gonna take all of those pixels and pinch them in. So if I go ahead and hit save here, and then we check this out, you can see that now our leaves look a little bit taller, a little bit longer. And if we switch that back now to square, watch what happens. Boop. They go back to how they were before because my camera shoots with square aspect ratio pixels. And there's a very good chance that your camera shoots in square pixel aspect ratio as well. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and leave that there. So those are the absolute basics of how to set up your timeline format and a little bit of what you can do with clip attributes in relation to your timeline format to adjust your footage and your clips and your finished project. If you have any questions about anything I talked about today or about any anything to do with Resolve in general, go ahead and ask them in the comments down below and I'd be more than happy to help you out. That does it for today's video, so until next time, enjoy your editing and have a good week.